thank you so much for having me on here. Honestly, like there's so many, I'm seeing so many faces, so many of my friends. I just like love and respect um, you guys. And then you have a lot of other strong leaders on here. So when Mike reached out, I'm like, what? Um, so I'm going to try my best not to disappoint. Okay. Um, but my name is Michelle. I am out of Tampa, Florida. This business has been such a freaking blessing. Um, it's really done a number uh, to mine and my partner's life. And really, I think it, it really started with me getting better at this part, which is what you guys asked me to talk about today. Um, so if I could shed a light or help you guys at all um, for the sales side of it, um, then that's what I'm going to try to do. But before this, I didn't have any insurance experience. I was working a regular job, went to school. Um, they didn't like call me up a ton with my resume. And um, so I was working at FedEx and I was doing this kind of part time until I started making a little bit more money part time than I was full time. Um, so now this is my full time gig. But my my sales process really does start on the phone. So I was just texting um, Jake and Ray and I was like, maybe you guys do this every week because that's so cool. You're getting to hear the live dials. And I think um, with the phone script, whichever one that you're using, if you get to show a little bit of personality on the phone, uh, sometimes I already know what's going to be a good sit and, and what's not. Do you know what I mean? Like I already get really excited about the people that I'm talking to. So I make little notes. If they have a dog, I'll make little notes. Um, if they already joked around with me about their wife and stuff, cause that's why I get excited. So first part of it starts at the dials and, um, you guys are already crushing that part. As far as uh, the in-home goes, I like to break it down into, um, four sections. Okay. Um, it's connection, green sheet, uh, why, and I usually will partner the why with an edification. So why and edify, and then budget. If I could tell you which part would be the best, um, that you can do the absolute, you can almost mess up everything else, but if you do the connection, right, um, it's eight out of 10 times, you're going to be able to help the family. Okay. And then that flips it. If you do the connection wrong and everything else, right, more than likely, you're not going to be able to help them. Okay. Um, so the connection that is your bond and rapport. I found that I used to get the same objections over and over and over. And that was, um, you know, I thought this was free. Uh, think about it. Can't afford it. I need to talk to my kids. And I found out all of that stuff, I was causing all of those objections right in the connection part of it all. Okay. And so the Alliance system, there's no magic words that you can say to get over the objection, but the way the system goes, it's set up and designed to overcome those objections before they ever happen in the, in the connection part. Okay. Where they say like, be a chameleon, you got to be really careful. So um, I was listening in on um, manifolds where he was like in a lady's house and she wasn't having the best time with money. And, uh, you know, she wasn't having the best time with life really. But if you become a chameleon and you get down on her level, on all the stuff that's not going right, it's just not going to work. You need to come in there and be an energy shifter. Okay. They need to be glad that they met you. And so the way that I do it is I'm always trying to like backwards navigate to how they got to this house here. So some good tips uh, to build rapport is I'm always figuring out like, how did you guys find this place? And then from how do they find this place? If it's a husband and wife, I get so excited. Like if I was sitting down with Jake and Bray, I would figure out like how they got to the house they're at now. Okay. And then if both of them were born in Mexico or whatever, I'm like, okay, how did you guys meet? Right. So you're just trying to bring out all the love. So it's how did you guys meet? Who put the moves on who? How did it go down? They have two beautiful children. I'm figuring out which one of their children are the most like them, vice versa. Who's their favorite? Uh, and these things, guys, when you're building that kind of rapport with, they're just bound to like you because you're talking about all the things that they love. As I'm doing it, it's not just small chit chat. What I'm doing is really fact finding. While I'm talking to them, I'm kind of figuring out who's kind of the decision maker, who's making more, who's making more money. I'm figuring out which one of their children is going to be in charge, who's the closest um, to them. 
I'm figuring out if their kids make decisions, because that's how it used to circle back and bite me is they'd be like, oh, I got to talk to my kid. I'm figuring out really, really early if their kid is involved in their decision making. If you guys are sitting on one legs, you can forget about it. Uh, yeah. A one leg appointment is um, it's anybody that like if you're sitting down with a husband, not the wife, or if you're sitting down with a parent and their kids help them, you need both parties to be there. OK, so you got to figure that out really, really early before you waste all of your time going through the rest of it. So Michelle, your- real, real quick, do you do you try to if you're talking to someone who's an elderly person on the phone, do you ask that question when you're booking the appointment or do you just book the appointment, find out if they're mar- if they're single, if, you know, like, let's say that it's a single gal, it's a single elderly lady. And you sit. do you wait until you sit down with them to discover whether or not? they use their their kids um i say it just kind of depends like for husband and wife it's a given i can't meet with you unless both of you are there like just can't do it can't do it um for an older couple you gotta be sometimes they won't put because they're not technically married sometimes they won't put their their husband on there but the guy answers the phone Uh, or something like that so even right there i'm like whoa 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 you didn't put michael on here how young is michael Blah, 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 blah. Like, I, and then you both have to be there. For the grandkids, it's kind of a surprise, I'd say. Oh, I don't okay. usually get it for that. Okay, uh-huh. so you wait until you get there. And then when you're talking, let's say if it's a if it's a gal and she's not married or husband's or whatever, but she's got kids and you're starting to ask questions about her. So you're figuring out while you're sitting down and talking with her whether or not she's handling her bills or if the kids are the ones that are that are helping her with that. Oh, 100%. So like most of the time, guys, there's so many tells and you guys are probably just ignoring them. But like when you say like, okay, how'd you find this place? They just moved here. So like if they tell you, hey, like I'm from Pennsylvania, I'd be like, what brought you this way? Usually it's some kind of illness. Usually it's sick parents. And that's the route I'm trying to go because that's probably why they filled out the card. Okay. Um, if you guys have ever gotten in the beginning, like you're asking questions and they hit you with like, what is this about? Like, what, like it means you're like causing anxiety. You're asking a lot of questions like this, like bow, 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 that it, it's not really open-ended. And they're just like, I feel like I would be causing anxiety if you would ask me all of that. But if you do it really welcoming, it open-ended questions, you kind of get excited about what they're excited about. It won't feel so nosy. Like they're not catching on to what you're trying to do. What I often use is a, is a system called SOFTEN. Okay. So it's an acronym. Uh, and so SOFTEN. So it's S is for smile. O is for open posture. Um, F would be front facing. So like if you've ever been in a house and they try to get you to sit on the couch and they're like on the couch and you're kind of sitting sideways, you guys always just want to be like at a table sitting like face to face where you're directly in front of them. So that's F. T would be touch. E would be eye contact. Get really, really good at eye contact. And then N is nodding. So 90% of of communication is nonverbal. So all of it matters. From the time that you hit the door to everything leading up to when you open your mouth, like you want to give them high fives. You want to do that kind of stuff because it's building connection with them. What I want to do so... From the connection, okay, usually if it falls right in the pocket, so let's just say, you know, you ask them what brought them down here and they say, you know, my mom was sick or something. I always ask, like, was she ill? It's not this, like, was she ill? It'll open up another door and another door. Sometimes if somebody loses, um, loses somebody, they'll say, I'm so sorry for your loss and you guys close it. You got it. Need they opened the door. They didn't have to tell you that their mom just passed away, but they did. So you need to go in. You can't kick the door down, but you can start asking like, "What happened?" Okay. So sometimes it, it aligns right in the pocket of why they sent in the card, right? Um. So they'll tell you know what happened. Was she ill? Yes, such and such. Okay. Now, did mom have everything in place when she died? Did you have to carry that financial burden? That, that's how that falls in the pocket. If it doesn't go directly down that way and you can start getting pulled in all these directions where 
Um, you know, sometimes you're talking about their family and they go off on a rant about politics or religion or this or that, and you got to get a hold of it. I found that laughing that if you do like a big old laugh and then you slap your legs or you do like a, a pattern of interruption, okay? You're like, oh my God, Joseph, you're crazy. Hey, look, hey, look, let me get to this. It is really going to bring you back on track. You'll be in there for hours before they even know why you were there if you let it get too off base. I can only tell you it's because I've been there for hours, you know, and it's just so sad, like, when you finally can control conversations, guys, it makes a total difference. And um, just like a tip too, when you are controlling conversations, I try to control them everywhere. Like on the trips, Joseph's not lying. Like if you're in my realm, I'm figuring out how you met your wife. Like how did it, I'm doing the same thing I do in the in-home everywhere because it only sharpens up my skills. So try it. If you're on the phone with your husband or your wife, control the conversation, ask more questions. It's going to make you better. Okay. But all right. So we get, we pattern interrupt. We get control of the conversation. It doesn't land directly as it should. We need to figure out why they sent in the card. Okay. So my leads, I do a lot of final expense. If you're doing anything else, it's, just, it's pretty much the same. I sent this in, I fold it down. Okay. And if you hand the paper like this, they will look everywhere except the card that they sent in. I usually just fold that baby down and then I put it directly in front of them. And I'll say, Sarah, hey, this was the card that you had sent in to us. Okay. Then I take my little cookie boop, 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 and I'll say, hey, this is for state regulated programs. I don't say the word life insurance because you people, they want what life insurance can do, but they don't want life insurance. Okay? Uh -huh. So I call everything a program. So I'll say, hey, Sarah, this is a card that we got from you. This is for state regulated programs and they're helping out with final expenses. Okay. Now, Sarah, at 63 years old, I figured you'd already have a program like this. Okay, um, because anybody who's been in the home, you know, it's always a surprise all the way at the end that they already have. So I want that now. That's how it's designed to get over it before it comes up, right? So I figured you'd already have a program like this. Okay. If me and Sarah are friends and she says no, I'm like, oh, Sarah, would that make sense why you have me out here? Okay. If Sarah says yes. Okay, so there's only two people. There's people who have insurance and there's people who don't. Okay, if they have insurance, they're already believing what you're doing. It does, it's not always about beating their price or doing all this stuff because they filled it out already having it. But eight out of 10 people don't know what they have. So I need Sarah, because we're friends, I need her to bring that paperwork out to me. Sometimes I'll just say, hey, Sarah, um, okay, so you already have something. I figured so. Who's that with? If she doesn't know, it's a wrap. If she doesn't know who it's with, what she's paying, because that's how it's going to go. You don't know who it's with? Do you know what you're paying? Wait, so what is such and such going to get when you pass away? Nothing. Wait, if you don't know, Sarah, do you know who also doesn't know? Mm -hmm. Probably. Mm -hmm. Do you have that paperwork around here? Like, and my hand goes up, and they're going to get the paperwork. Okay. If she doesn't have anything, I'm just moving right along. But I'm I'm not going anywhere. I'm not opening up this ATM. I'm not doing nothing until she gets that paperwork out. So, okay. so hang on a second. So that is huge. So like you aren't asking, gosh, do you think it'd be okay, Sarah, if you could maybe go get that policy for us to take a look <laughs> at? Like I love the hand gestures, like, hey, you know, get that, get that thing out, because we gotta take a look at that. Because if you don't know where it is, then Pablo ain't gonna know either. Now, there's some times where Sarah won't have the paperwork, right? right? Okay. Is there older? I mean, I lose stuff all the time. It's probably in the safest place possible that I don't know where it is. And that's where their stuff is, too. Um, but I'll get Sarah to pull out a bank statement. You know, I'm looking at who the company is, and then we're making a phone call. The way that I'll say it is like, hey, Sarah, we won't be able to see what you can qualify for until we know where you're at. Don't know what you can qualify for until we know where you're at. That's good. Okay. So for this, for the sake of this, I'm going to say that you guys, they don't have insurance. Okay. So don't have insurance. 
So will it make sense while she sent this in? Okay. So my job, what we're going to do is I'm going to see which programs you can qualify for. Okay. So I get my book. This is the first time, if you think about it, um, we've probably been chatting for about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And I did open up the ATM. It's the same thing in house. Okay. Um, my ATM, I took out the full of black stuff. I just put some flowers. I love some flowers. That's me. You do you. Okay. Um, but one of my clients gave this to me and she passed away. Mm. Now, um, so it's always like, oh my God, that's beautiful. And then it's a story. Uh, you guys know um story sell for sure so um, i have this out and i'll open it i'll open it up in here okay um my about means up here but then right here is my license okay so now i'll just start whatever they had going on if they're a sibling of three if they have a dog if they have whatever this is where i'm showing them that we are the same because i'm 27 a lot of times i'm sitting down with people that are my grandparents age so I'll show them this and I'm like, yeah, so that's me. I'm my grandparents' favorite. Where's your favorite? You know, stuff like that. They have a favorite. I don't care what you say. If you're a parent, you have a favorite too. You don't have to tell me, but okay. So this is where it's just a little bit more personality. I'm a human. Okay. Flip this baby over. I don't know if you guys can see. Okay. So it says, it says companies I represent. I say, these are some of the programs we work with. Everything is a program in my book. Okay, they know it's insurance. I know it's insurance, but we don't have to say it out loud. Okay, um, these are some of the programs that I work with. This one is circled. So, see, Foresters and Omaha, they're circled. I say this is the, this is circled because these are the ones I have. This is when I put my parents in. We're getting that out the way. Um, if you guys are selling insurance and you don't have any, you're crazy. Yes, I mean, it's just building, it's building so much credibility and all of the reasons you don't have it are the same reasons your clients are not buying it. Uh, so you might just want to double check what your objection is and then get over that. Okay. So this is where I put my parents. This is the one that I have. You're going to fall somewhere in here. Okay. Based on your answers to these questions here. So simple. I use this ATM like Bible because it's so duplicatable and we don't have to make it up. So, this is the green sheet. It's just like not green. Okay. Um, but I have this out and then I'll tell just for the sake, Sarah, I'm just going to keep using you. So, but all right, Sarah. So, um, what we're going to do, we're going to go a little bit over your health. Okay. That's when we're going to be really, really specific on surgeries, medications, all that stuff. Okay. Then we're going to go a little bit into finance. Okay. Just ballpark stuff. Okay, and then we're going to talk about what you would need this to do for you and Pablo, okay? Okay, as Sarah is nodding her head to me, that's how I get confirmation that she is still with me. If Sarah ever went like this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you need to go back. And so like, it's not a shocker at the end when people weren't buying from me before, but I was just ignoring all of the signs uh, throughout the entire process. So you're, you're really paying attention to body language big time. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. The entire time. Okay. The entire time. Okay. And if you guys are with a couple, you need them both to like you, or you need the decision maker to like you a little bit more. Okay. Um, that's going to be super key. Right. So then I get a green sheet. And so um, hopefully everybody has seen a green sheet before, but I fill it out the same way just super routine and I will never forget it. So I'll say, all right. And it's not just me talking. If I was doing it with you, Joseph, I make it super interactive. So I'm like, Joseph, how do you spell your first name? That simple. Okay. Last name. All right. Um, and then how tall are you? If I'm, if they're, are you shrinking? About how much do you weigh? Sometimes they'll say too much. You laugh. That's the same. If, whatever they say, but then I'm writing it down. Uh, are you smoking? If they are, I always ask when you're going to quit that stuff and you'll get a laugh. Sometimes they'll say when I die and that what is, I'm not saying it to say it. I'm saying it because I'm like, all right, they're getting that smoke rate or I'm doing the math on how much they're paying for cigarettes. So sometimes they'll say, well, I'm down. I used to smoke three packs. Now I'm down to a pack. I'm like, okay, so they can afford a $5 pack of cigarettes a day. That kind of stuff. You know, when's your birthday? Whatever. Okay. Then we come down here and um, it's income, 
income question. So I say, okay, let's dissect your income about how much is coming in from Social Security. Okay. About how much is coming in from your pension. I think everybody has a pension. So you assume everyone has a pension. So you ask. Oh, yeah. And okay. they're like, I blew that. I did that. Well, at least I knew that they had one. Okay. Yeah. Um, sometimes if you only ask Social Security, they, your clients, they know what they are doing. They have been around way longer than me, and I know how they finagle the system. So if we only ask about Social Security, they won't tell you the cash they make from cutting other people's lawns or what they do and their side hustle or whatever. So I'm always dissecting their income. So I'll say about how much is coming in from Social Security, how much is coming in from your pensions and investments. I'll throw investments in there. If you don't know, you have to start taking your investments out around 71. So they got some. They're about to start collecting it right there. That's where I find it out. Um, and then I'll say any other income because now I want their side hustles. Okay. So get all that. And then I go, sh I go to the wife too, or whatever. Okay. Um, the next section underneath it, that's their house. So guys, do you know how many people buy a house and never live to pay it off? Like, so if they have a house and they pay that baby off, I'm making them feel good about it. Okay, because you people will never remember what you say, but they will always remember how you make them feel. Okay, so you own your home. Yes. You guys got a mortgage on here. No, mm, that's a perfect time to give them a high five. Okay, um, if they do have a mortgage, it's not a big deal. They still own the home, but I am going to get this is what I care about. I don't care about the lender. I care about how much the house if they had to guesstimate how much it's worth. Okay. I care about what they owe left and then what their monthly payment is. Mm -hmm. If I don't know if you guys have as many like trailer parks, whatever, yeah. we have a lot in here. Um, so I'll say like, sometimes they say, I don't have a mortgage. You're going to be tricky. You guys say like, are you paying lot rent? Um, or with the HOAs, because it, what I'm trying to do and what you guys are trying to do, like, it's not just for kicks and giggles. It's really for you to be the expert and see what they have coming out a month on their expenses. It's so strategic. Like the Alliance did a heck of a job with the green sheet, honestly. Um, but anyway, so then you get into the next section and it's about debt. So big types of debt, credit cards, la -di -da. This is where I'm figuring out their car payment and I'm figuring out their car insurance. Big deal. And I love when people are saying, you know, it's only... It's only 150 bucks. It's only 60 bucks. It's only, I'm like, oh, okay. Like only, because we're going to get to the end. Like I, I'm trying, I'm already using their verbiage. So whatever they're saying to me, I'm just going to mirror. So it's only this, you know? Um, when wow. you get to the investment section of this page, if you got it in the, in the first part, it's not a hard question. It's not a scary question. They already told you. So it's just like, hey, where are you guys keeping your emergency cushion? Where are you keeping, where are you keeping your savings? Where are you keeping your 401k? Where is your IRA? Where is the, where is it? And a lot of times they'll tell you exactly where it is, or they're going to tell you exactly where they spent it. I'm okay either way, but I don't want to surprise that they have it in the bank. Right. Uh, if you are getting to this section and people are telling you enough, I got enough in the bank or I have this, then you didn't do that great of a job on the connection part. They don't trust you. So either slow down, back it up. You to start asking about their family, go back. Cause it makes them If they won't tell you hypothetically what's in their bank account that you can never check or verify, then they're definitely not giving you a check. Like we can just agree on that. Okay. So, so when you get to that point, so you, so you basically, everything that you're doing here is that you're finding the money. So that way you can spend the money, right? So that way you're finding right. money, so you can kill mm -hmm. them and spend the money. So if you're to that point to where they give you that weird, you know, you got that weird juju where they're like, yeah, enough. How do you come back around to get back in there? Oof. I really have, I haven't gotten it in a long time, but if I got it, I probably would laugh. Honestly, I think my go-to in any kind of situation is to laugh. And okay. then at this point, I think it's either really hit or miss. So I'm just going to test, you know, test, <laughs> test them and be like, well, what's enough to you? Because enough to me is kind of like that. Um, 
Okay. Or what do you what do you mean enough? Like I'm just gonna question them right there instead of moving on, pretending that they didn't just like not trust me. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if they tell you that they have a chunk in the bank, put a name on it. Okay. So if if Sarah got 50 grand in the bank, I'm asking Sarah what the 50 grand is for. Gotcha. What's it for? What's it for? Like, what is, what's this money for? Um, she says, hey, this is for my kids. Hey, this is for, um, you know, you never know. Like, I just had to put a roof on. I just had, oh, okay. So that's for this kind of emergency. That is not the money you want to use for this. Right. I'm separating it. Or that's your kid's inheritance. You don't want your kids to tap into their inheritance to pay for your final expenses. Mm. Right? Okay. Okay. Um. So it's just like separating it and guys like also right there, if they have a bank account, you're not going to get to the end where they don't have a bank account and you get this direct express card. And now you're just like, ah, because it's designed for that to not happen. Okay. So this is how I do the green sheet. And I like to go a little slow because throughout the thing, you're still going to get stories and stories, um, how they bought their house and da 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 all that stuff is just building more rapport with them. So your rapport is not over and then you switch to being this, this insurance person, you know, build rapport throughout the entire process. So that's really easy for them to talk to you. So real quick, you mentioned the direct express card, which someone doesn't know that's, that's how a lot of people get paid their social security instead of mm -hmm. being deposited into a bank. It gets deposited on a, on a, on a visa debit card. So when you're, it is, so do you, do you uncover it early on that they have a direct express? If all they're getting is social security, do you ask them? Oh, so all I get is social security. Do you ask them? Okay. Is that when you ask them, okay, do you have that deposited into your bank or do you have that deposited on a direct express card? So I'll either do it right there or I'll do it in this banking section and you'll get the person that says, oh, I don't trust the bank. I got it all in the car. But you can only get that, I feel like, if you say where. Okay. So you got to okay. ask. Okay. All right. So then the bottom section, okay, the bottom section, it says in the past five years, any hospitalizations, blah, blah, blah. I don't ask it like that. We have just a list of questions, like health questions um, that I go through. But right off the bat, I just say like, all right, Sarah, you taking any medications? And she'll say, oh, so honestly, the first thing that they start doing is just start spewing them out um, off of their memory, which isn't great. We just, they're human, right? So I'll just say, Sarah, you know, I can't spell that stuff. Can you grab me the bottles? Or do you have a list? Did the doctor give you like a list or something? I cannot spell that stuff. And if you just play dumb, people will explain stuff to you. Mm. And I, that's, a, that's a secret power. The less you know, the better. Um, so they'll go get the list or they'll get the bottles and even that is not enough. Okay. So you get that and then they'll start crossing some stuff out that they don't take anymore. I'm like, wait, 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 because guys, you need to know what they were taking before. Um, so don't let them cross it out. Don't let them tell you what they like to take on Tuesday mornings. You want to see the entire shebang. Okay. And then I'll say, okay, but guys, I'm annoying with their own. Like, I just, I'm super thorough. We're just going to go head to toe. Okay. Um, so I'll say like, is there anything else you're taking for like anxiety? Um, I call everything anxiety, schizophrenia is anxiety, bipolar is anxiety. Uh, I'm going to see the medicine and I'm going to know what it is, but I don't want to make them feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll tell you, but most of the time they call it anxiety too. We both know what's up, but we, it's just unspoken. Um, I say, hey, how's your heart, heart attacks, stents, congestive heart failure? They ever say anything like that? No. What about your lungs? Because they'll bring you out the paper, but they won't bring you out the inhaler. Okay. What about your lungs? You taking any inhalers? Oh, yeah, I have an emergency. Go get that for me. Uh, we're just going to get it all, all out because I just don't like surprises. Um, and I'm thinking if you guys have been around a while, you hate them too. So, um, after that, I'm like liver, kidneys. Are you got the sugar stuff? You know, the tingles in your hands and your feet. I don't call it neuropathy. I'm not a doctor. 
I'll let them say it if they know it. But other than that, I'm just going to call it tingles. Um, now, all I'm trying to do, guys, is just figure out what's up. Um, and then, like, help them see that it's not a big deal. We'll still be able to help your family. Right. That's the goal. Um, if you find out that they had a heart attack or something, you need to be so up in their business. Like, when was it? Oh my God, how scary was that? Um, make sure that you're edifying along the way. Sometimes you're sitting down with some warriors, man. Like they have been nine lives. They have been through every, they should, probably shouldn't be here. And it's so easy to say that stuff. Cause when you're talking about death, which is really the next page, it's like, dude, it's such a blessing that you're even here. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, but you can only do that if you build rapport throughout. Hmm. So do that. Probably I'm getting, I'm spending a little bit of time on the health part, but I'd say 80% of my time is in that connection part. The green sheet is pretty fast. Okay. Um, now here's the special page. I don't know if you guys are using this page. I use it too. Um, this is why is it important? Um, I don't know if you guys see it. Yep. We can see it. Okay, cool. Um, why is this important? So it's one of four reasons. Uh, I was just talking with an agent the other day. So I, I think I want to explain, make this a question. So you can explain the first part. I always tailor it to whoever I'm sitting with. So I'd be like, all right. So I'm sitting down with Jake and Ray. I'd be like, okay, so most people fill this out for one of four reasons. Okay. The first part is to pay off a mortgage. So that's like you guys paying off this beautiful $200,000 home. Okay. Like, I'm just saying what's real, what's on the sheet that I just got. Okay. Um, be weary. If they're a little bit sick, don't even bother. That's not going to happen. Okay. But young couple. Okay. So this is like us paying off the mortgage. Okay. Replacing lost income. So guys, that's like that. Ray, you would lose. Uh, let's just say you're losing about $5,000 out of your home a month. Okay. That's replacing that income for you. The final expenses, that's, you know, that's the burials, that's the cremations, that kind of stuff. And then the last one is leaving a legacy for your family. So that's leaving money to the girls. That's seeing what their life would be like should your income not be here anymore. Okay. Which one feels the most like you? Um, and so for me, it doesn't really matter what they say. Like it really doesn't matter what they say. I, I, like if they say the more whatever, because I'm going to just take it away. And so um, it's cute that they want their final expenses taken care of. But the why is like, okay, I know you want your final expenses taken care of, Jake. But walk me through, like, you pass away today without anything in place, okay? And you pass away. What does that look like financially for Ray and the girls? Mm. Or I know you want to replace your income, Jane. But walk me through what it looks like if she were to lose $5,000 out of her home tomorrow. Like, how does that impact her? So I acknowledge what they said, and then you're just going to take it away anyway. Okay. Um, whatever answer that they get, you want to at least go four more questions. So if they say, I don't know, if they say um, it's going to be tough. I'm just going to write on this sheet and like, it's going to be tough. And when you say tough, like, what is it that you mean? Like how long after Jake's funeral are, is things going to get tight for you? Like, and it's just, and it's having, I don't know if I can say balls, but I'm just going to do it. Yeah. But it's just having, it's having like, it's doing it's being bold enough to care about him enough instead of just slapping like a three thousand dollar policy on him. Because I don't know how many times I, I've lost seven people since I've been doing this, and I could tell you that they didn't have enough. You know what I'm saying? So it's like here's this little itty bitty problem, which is the cremation. Sometimes people will say the VA will do it. Well, the VA is gonna do my cremation. And some people will be like, oh well, they start packing up their stuff. I like, well, thank God. Thank God the VA is going to take care of the cremation because what is Ray going to do when she loses your income? I don't care about the cremation. Does that make sense? Some people will fight on whether the VA will cover or don't cover it, but the, the final expenses sometimes are the least of your client's worries. Social Security is going to cut their income in half. Their life is about to be tremendously different, and it's really up to you to know that these are real people, and if this is your mom or this is your grandma or this is 
your need, whatever it is, you would want them to have them enough that they possibly can. Like don't exceed the budget part, but it's the most that they possibly can. So um, do you guys call from the home, Joseph? Oh gosh, yes. You do? Oh okay. my God. Don't, um, or stop me if this is not how you guys do it. This is just how I've done it with Mike. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so the way that I have always done it is the green sheet is filled out. Okay. So the green sheet just tells you where people can go. There's like five different answers. It's the why that's really going to be able to move somebody forward. Okay. Um, so the why, once I have it and I tell them, you know, like, oh, this is a good music. So edify, I will use two things. I'll say, um, usually I figure out if their mom did something for them or their dad did something for them, like, did they take care of it? No matter what they say, I'm like, okay, well, people do things, one, either because, so because your mom did a hell of a job and took care of this stuff for you and your brother, that's why you're doing it for you and your kids, but use their names, right? If their parents didn't and they got burdened, I'd be like, wow. So going through the hell that you went through, you have realized that that is just not something that you want to put your kids through. Your kids will never have to be burdened with what you went through. And that's a powerful thing. Like, holy cow. Right. So that's the edit. You just lift people up on what they feel good about. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Once I have the why I call Mike or I was calling Mike and I would start with this. I'd be like, Hey, Mike, I'm sitting down with Sarah and Pablo and Hey, they had filled out this card here. Um, to, uh, for help with the final expenses because right now neither one of them have anything and you just like take that pause like anything boom let them feel it and then I'm just going to repeat back to them and if if Paula were to die right now Sarah's saying it's just going to be so tough and when I say tough I mean however long she said after the funeral like she is not going to be able to afford this. She's not, the lifestyle is severely going to change. The kids' lives look completely different. Oh, my God. That is the last thing that Pablo wants to happen to his family. Mike, can you tell me, like, what program do you think is going to be the best for them so that way the kids and then don't have to go through that? Then, like, all, like usually what Mike says, he'll be like, um, wow, what a hell of a man. Um, what a good, you know, she got a good one whatever, whatever the situation is, he's going to edify too. Then he's going to edify me. He usually will say like, oh, I trust her with my parents or blah, 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 whatever. And then he'll tell me which way to go. But guys, it has nothing to do with getting a quote. You can just throw that baby out the window. Like the quote, it matters, but it don't matter. Um, like we're about to, this is the issue. We're about to do them, fix the issue as much as we can with the budget that they have. But that's like, minuscule part yeah so hang hang on a second so 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 basically and you're doing exactly what we teach on our team which is it's about finding the why you let the client tell you how jacked up stuff is going to be you oh don't God. let them get away with something wishy-washy or wussy sam it's going to be tough or it's going to be hard you drill down you absolutely it's going to be hard and what does that mean and then you get on the phone with your coach from the home and you reiterate everything that they just said, because that way they're hearing their own story again, which mm -hmm. is solidifying it. And the last thing here is even worrying about the quote, because the quote really doesn't matter at this point. The why is what matters. Is that what you're saying? The why is all that matters. Awesome. The why is all that matters. It's the same reason why people will have Christmas for their kids, but their electricity will be off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, it's like people will do their best to not disappoint other people. And like, it's so powerful. The why is so powerful. It's why somebody could say, I really want my final expenses. And then when you show them a final expense stuff and they don't buy, it's like, well, it's the right price. No, like it just wasn't a value. Right. Like if, if that's what you're getting, then you're basing it on price. And I promise you somebody could go right behind you and beat them by a dollar. And there goes your client. So it was never, it never had any value to them. Right. 100%. Okay. Um, so call from the home. Like if you're not calling, call. And when you're calling, call with a Y. Uh, and it's okay, I think, like in the beginning, if you're not getting all the way down, but at least you have most of it. Who's going to be in charge? What is the initial financial impact? And then like, how does it make them feel knowing? You know, if you can have that stuff and you could like deliver that to your, to your upline or deliver it to your, whoever it is that's helping you guys, if you can do that stuff, 
they're going to be able to really, really help you um, help that family, not make a sale, help the family. It's different. Um, so that from there is budget and then your application process. So if you, I did like um, paper apps for the longest time, those work. You don't need to wait till you have a computer or an iPad or whatever. Um, now I'll do it right then and there. But it's if you flip the page, okay, well, what happens next? And it tells you how you can just practice saying it and they won't know it's your first time. But it's like, we're going to show you some options that give you peace of mind fill out the paperwork, have a sign, and I'm going to do the best that I possibly can to get you guys approved. And then right here, if they pick an option, uh, or if you show them options, don't talk anymore. Just don't talk anymore. Um, after you ask this question, which one best suits your family's needs and the budget best? Let them think it out. And when the couples are like disputing, let them talk to each other. Like, they're really trying to work it out. It matters to them. If they ask which one you do, I always go down. Uh, I'm always going to choose the one that's less. So that way they never are like, look at this girl trying to get some money out of me. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, just go go down. And if they're like, no, no, I think we could do the middle one, then it's secure. Secure. Uh, um, this right here, this is the last thing that you need and you're good to go. So hold your excitement, but you'll be like, okay, all we need to get this going is just your driver's license. And you, your hand is out. It's like super, super simple. I think like we just overcomplicate it. That is awesome. So it's way simpler than anyone wants to think. So, so basically what you're saying is that as a new person, you don't have to be an underwriting guru. Oh you, really do, you really don't have to know product at all because you're going to pick up the phone. You, your job is to find the why. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah and ask the medical questions and then call and relay the why and the medical questions to the person you're getting coaching from. Yes. I do not get on the phone and say, Hey, Joseph, I'm sitting down with uh, what's your name again. Um, and, uh, you're five, two weighs about 200 pounds, blah, blah, blah. Wants final expenses. Like that is so icky. I don't know if you've gotten I've got those calls. Thank you for saying that, dude. That is that oh. is, it's so irritating. Oh my God. I'm just like, can you tell me about their family, please? Can you tell me who's at stake here or what's on the line? Like I can read the green sheet. If you took a picture, I can see that they're five two and whatever. Like I do not need that part, nor does it matter. Um, I need to know what's up. And so like that, if you get really, really good at figuring out what the problem is, you will not run into half the issues that you have. Mm. Yeah. That's I magic. stand by that. That is magic. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, man. How to get that off my chest. I don't think you, I mean, maybe you guys don't do it. I don't mind to this. No, I, I'm, I, I, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that no one has ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure I've never done that. I'm sure when I started, I didn't do that. Oh, I'm sure oh, I never, you know, I, until he slapped me around and told me to stop doing it. So oh, yeah. cool. Well, uh-huh. hey, um, and, and I know that so, so, and I know that thank you for staying a little longer. Now that we've got the price, now that you figured out, you filled out the app, you got all there. So what do you do on the back end now that you've got the app written? and everything, what do you do to wrap up the sale and wrap up your appointment? All right. So um, I think like, especially for um, like, I think the payment is going to be like super important. You need to mention this. So this is how I word it every time like this. I'll say, all right, Joseph, hey, look, we're going to know if you get approved in the next couple of days. Okay. That's when you're going to make your first payment. And I'm nodding and I'm saying, okay. And he is saying, okay. Okay. And then once once I get his acknowledgement, I'll say, okay, going forward, what's your preferred day of the month? Bingo. So now he's not surprised and I'm not surprised. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I get that squared away. So then I close up and I'll say, okay, how do you feel? And then where I say, I'm like, man, sometimes if you, if they started crying and stuff, sometimes they'll really tell you like, thank you so much, blah, 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 blah. And then I'm like, okay, hang on. Right here, we just did it for what, like about 50 bucks. Okay. If the AC were to go out, if the tires went to hell, if any stuff went bad, is this something that's still going to be feasible for you? And they'll say, 
Yeah. If they make any kind, I mean, if I see the slightest eyebrow move like this, I'm like, okay, wait. And I will go, I will just drop it down to the one we did or less, less. And this is how, I mean, I honestly, you can feel the client like take a breath. If they don't blink about it, don't blink about it. Um, but if they do fix it, cause it's going to be an issue later. Um, and then if it's, if it's no issue, I'm like, okay, cool. We're going to have a date in about two weeks. Uh, we're going to highlight what's important, all that good stuff. Okay. And then I'm out of there. Well, you know, ERS is sick money, that kind of stuff. But the application part of that is like, I'm going to call you. I'm going to say, congratulations. Woohoo. We're going to have a date to go over all your paperwork. Gotcha. So we're going to go back over the application. We'll go back mm -hmm. over the policy once they, they get it. Cool. Cool. And so, and then you get the ERSs and you ask the safe money, Medicare questions, and you are recruiting across the table as well. 100%. And like, and usually like right as I'm about to get the last signature, I'll be like, oh my gosh, I forgot. We got to do your emergency response system. And, like, what? and I always do it like right when they just signed the last thing, like if it totally slipped my mind, but really I just got to make sure that this is done first and then um, double back.